I have finally decided after many, many years to go back and pull my work from 10 and 15 years ago and make it easily available to everyone. It's always been free and available, but I got a bunch of videos from my archives that I made 10 years ago. Not the best recorded videos, but I hope not being too perfect encourages anyone that, that they can play. I don't I like videos recorded too perfectly because it gives the idea that my piano is not good enough. Ah, I learn on any piano you want. It's the music that counts, man, not the cool looking video that comes with it. You know? These charts I made 15 years ago to teach my students and I was working with Francis Clark, keyboard musician. I was using the adult learner book. I think 13 years and older, you know, use, use the adult learner book. I would go through this and teach this and then I would push a student through Francis Clark as sight reading, like I wouldn't have them practice. And using this and Francis Clark, uh, a 13 year old who was taking band class in school, I would teach 10 years of piano curriculum in one year, as far as the progress, no, no, a year and a half, uh, 18 months. Yup, 10 years worth of piano progress in 18 months using this with the Francis Clark keyboard musician for the, for the adult learner. It's, it's, it was a gray book, at least several years ago it was. One thick single gray book. And if the student was uh, in band class, then that was, that was the recipe that I had for making it go that quickly. Of course, anybody could learn, anybody could. But these are the charts. You do not need to buy a keyboard chart book. I don't have any writing on these pages. It should be self-evident. You know, once you know what your music is, you should know what it is. But this is for reference. I don't have the writing in the letters because I want to keep the activity in the right side of the brain. We don't need to teach music like it's math or reading class. I mean, music is supposed to be art and wild and monkey hanging on the wall. I'm weird, but it's fun. You know, music is supposed to be fun, man, creative. And keep it that way. And the curriculum should be just the same. So now I'm part Cherokee. And so was my father and, and his mother. And well, it eventually goes back and, and, and there was this Cherokee uh, great, great, great grandmother or something. But I'm part Cherokee. And so I'm testifying that these are not Native American or as we like to call ourselves Indian markings. These uh, make sense. So let's look here. You obviously have figured out by now that this is the C scale. These are Ionian modes or major, major scales. And it's very simple. You've got one, three, five, and then you've got two, four, six, and this is the seven. And it's the same for every single one of these. You've got both octaves, the sevens in the middle, which you really should think of the seven as below the one, not just above the six, but below the one, because, you know, having your thumb go play the seven is so easy. So, you know, a C7 chord, just move your thumb over a little bit and accidentally hit two notes at once is how it sounds anyway. And there you go. And it's how to, you know... I mean, C7, C major 7 should be played with only three fingers, your thumb playing two notes, if you didn't know that. So, uh, here the charts are. Use these charts and, and think visually. And it'll, it gets intuitive and it makes lots of sense. Now, uh, these charts are available. Link is below in the description. They're GIF files, so they're very small. I've thought about converting these into vector images, but they're perfect squares. So I, I don't, I don't know if it's really important to not make them blurry by making them get big. You can print these out on uh, uh, overhead transparencies and write on them, which I'm actually going to get to looking at stuff in a moment. But let let's look at uh, what the scale charts here look like. They're all solid. It starts with C because it's easy to understand that way, I suppose. Now, watch the videos that I made, but I'll explain this. Really, you should, you know, C is a good place to start because it's easy. But after C, the, the, the first scale to learn is uh, the ones that use all the black notes, like C sharp, F sharp, uh, or, or B. Because so all you do is you take two fingers and, and they go on the on the set of two black keys. And you take three fingers and those go on the set of three black keys. Look at the at the official, official, formal scale curriculums for what notes go where. Those are the notes that go on those keys. They're the notes, the fingers. 
the fingers that go on all those black note scales, the fingers that go on those keys, the, the, these three go on those keys and those go on those. So you slowly start to take away the black notes in the flat scales, uh, just drop the extra finger down. But even on, even in F, that finger for the three set is up on the B flat. And, and the same, this, this finger in the left hand is, is on the B flat for the lower, uh, you know, how that, how that works. So, uh, that's just an interesting thing to think about, but it, I suppose, you know, but, but there's a scale. You know, scales are, are useful. Uh, blue scales, great for reference. Um, and blue scales are two finger scales. Um, F uses three fingers, of course. Uh, I do believe there's one scale. I think, I think it's C sharp. Yeah, it's C sharp where the thumb starts on the black note. B, two finger scale. This goes on the B. You, you can figure that out. I think that's in one of the videos that, that I'm, I'm just dusting off after all these years that should follow in, in this video. Uh, major, you can figure out what these are. Here are the modes. But this isn't all. I've got a whole set of charts for all these. We can look at chord charts. And it, the, the, you know, this is simple. You know, so, you know, here are your chords. If, if you, if you want to do blues, uh, you know, you do the dominant because you're always playing the, the, the dominant seven, not the normal, you know, a, a, you know, who plays a major seven, you know, unless you're into cool jazz or fusion or you just want to be awesome like for half a second. But, you know, a lot of the chords are going to be using the dominant seven. So use the dominant chart if you're studying blues, jazz, that sort of thing. And, and, and they're very, very simple. You've got the inversions. There's your seven in the middle. Two is also the nine. Four is also the 11 because, you know, you're playing seven in the nine. So seven plus two is nine. That's a nine chord. You know, the 11, that's four. So four plus seven is 11. And the 11, you know, it's six, so it's seven, 13. You know, th those are easy. And they're there. There they are. You can, you can mark it, change it, shift it. Once you know where the notes are, it's, it's easy to make other little tiny subtle changes. Awesome reference chart. Major, uh, major chords. There they are. Here again, it's your C. That's your major seven. Uh, minor chords. There you go. So now, now these are the same. This, this technically, the, the major chords, this technically is the same chart as the Ionian. Uh, this is technically the same chart as the, excuse me, Mixolydian. So if we go back to the scale charts, I believe it is, the Ionian chart. We just looked at that. There's the same chart. I just copied it and organized it. And this is the dominant chord chart. Well, then I have, uh, I, I, I got these interesting chord chart things that, that I, I made. We do the Ionian mode. This is the normal major mode. This is the, 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 the major key most people are used to. Now, there's a parallel minor, which is one of the early things to learn in modulation. And any, any time you want, you can, you're in the major, there's like there's this alternate universe of the parallel minor thing going on. And actually, there's seven of those. They're modes, and you can change. It's a mode change. But here are the basic chords that would appear in a mode. This is A. Ah, that's confusing. Let's do C because it's white notes and we get the point that way. I know C is boring, but we're not playing the music, so it won't sound boring. It just make the point. Excuse me. So here we go. This is your one. And then uh, this is uh, this is the four. This is the five, the dominant. Okay, now, 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 now notice this changes around. This has got our, our group of two black notes here, our group of three black notes here. Be, be prepared for that to change around. That's because I want to show the triad. So you got to pay attention to that. Sorry, saving space. You're smart. You can figure it out. Uh, this here is the six. So it's going to be one, four, five, because those are important. And then six, that's also important. But then we've got two and three. Uh, arguably, two should be down, but, you know, and then, of course, this is the seven. And, uh, you know, the, the seven is kind of an extension of the five, if you think about it, because it's this is the dominant seven of that maybe, but 
uh, they're your chords. And again, in each one, it shows you what the two, four, and six, and the seven are in each of those. And those are your chords. This is the scale, and they're your main chords. That that can be useful. And in, in, in here's here's what you do. You you print off all these charts, or or you're really bored, and you write some JavaScript or HTML page linking them back and forth on your app. You know, if you do something like that, if you write a little app or a page to make these link and interconnect, let me know. I'll celebrate it and tell the universe. Like seriously, if you do something with these, let me know, uh, and I'll 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 tell the world. This is my gift to the world because I wish that I had known this stuff as a kid, but because I have the awesome and patient. I love you, Sue Griffith and Ruth Optograf, because I had the piano teachers that I did. Larry Zomer, my, my band director for, I mean, uh, six years, minus uh, one, one middle year in seventh grade. I had these teachers, and I understand uh, about music, what I do, including the dilemma of needing to read through notes, or needing, to, needing to learn music through reading notes. I'm very sorry, I'm very, very exhausted today, but I need to have a little bit of tea. My brain's tired and I'm misspeaking. So, uh, you know, these are Ionian charts. What, what you do, I'm almost done with this, follow me. What you do, if you want to teach modes, you know, mode changes, how do you, how do you learn a mode change? How do you do key change? How do you do modulation and do key changes? What in the world? I've got a little uh, audio recording I've done on the circle of fifths. And I might redo that and make it into a little video, you know, but using the circle of fifths to understand key changes. You know, that you go clockwise, it sounds like the future, and you go counterclockwise on the circle. If you find your key, you go mode change, key change, clockwise sounds like the future. Going counterclockwise before it sounds like the past or a new beginning, and the farther you go, the the more farther in time you're going forward or backwards is the feeling. If you ever wonder what to to make of it, so these are Ionian again. C Ionian. This is the normal what we think of as major. These are the chords you're allowed to play in a normal simple key of C major. Now, if we go to the six Aeolian, this would be like the parallel minor. Here they are. Now I'm going to go A minor. Again, these are all white, but this is A minor. So the, the, the thing is, what, what you can do with this, is, you know, this is going to be the one in A minor, and this is the four, this is the five in A minor. And that's a, I mean, you know, that, that's, you know, you've got. You know, it's just interesting how this, this all works. It's the minor chord. Okay, you want to get to harmonic minor, that's another, you know, the, the, the C major leading to A minor is actually the harmonic minor. That's that in chord progression, guitar thinking chords, that's one way to look at it. The harmonic minor, you're really, you know, the C major into the A minor. That that sounds very, I mean, it sounds like Zorro going as a very, very Mexican type of movie, very Spanish, very, very Jewish music, Italian, very, I call it Mediterranean culture. I can just see the black olives and I want to drink olive oil. You know, it just, you know, very, very harmonic minor is beautiful with that. And a number of other ways, of course, of course, of course. But I mean, I'm, I'm part Cherokee. So uh, I'm 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 into uh, uh, whatever other things. So let's let's consider this. If if I went to you know a Ionian, and let's say I was playing four, my four here. This is a D major in the key of A. We're in the key of A. So D is the four. Okay. So let's say I'm playing D. And I want to do a mode change. Well, I printed off all my charts. And so this is A Ionian, and that's my four chord. That's my DC, right over here on the left in the middle, right there, second down, middle one on the left, right there, D. Okay, got it, ready? Sorry, I got to change over here, click over here. But you've already printed it off, and you just turn the page for how you've organized it. You play that one, jump to that. Whatever your triad was, whatever your two, four, six was you were playing, play these two, four, six, triad, whatever note you had, play that instead, and you just did a mode change in, in chords. The charts are right there. 
And you can do that with any of the modes. That's what th that's what this was for. That's that's what I made this for. That's what this was about. One other thing. Uh, this is just for reference. You know, major is Ionian, minor is Aeolian. Uh, the dominant is Mixolydian, which is the regular one for most chord charts. If you're looking for a place to start instead of buying a chord chart book. And then, then that's whole. W is whole and H is half. Uh, it's a nice little reference for you. So this is the, uh, this is the, the, uh, it's a Google document. It's free. Take it, pass it, copy it, distribute it. Uh, but please don't put numbers on them. Um, maybe earmark them or something. Maybe, but don't don't put. Please don't put numbers or words or text on these and redistribute them. Please don't. If you do, I will disavow you. Uh, I won't chase after you or say that you're bad. I'll just say uh, that's not what I wanted. If you want to get these and print these off and write your own little chicken scratching, which I will do on my own, of course, you know, little little sticky post-it note things, whatever, to find your place. That It's great. Okay. But these are supposed to have no text. That's the idea. If you don't get that, you've missed the point. But hopefully any teacher, you know, this is for a teacher or someone who understands to sit down and take these that they kind of at least a little bit grasp and use it for reference. That's what this is designed for. I wish I could play with these magically, but I can't. I made these charts to to hopefully teach the world what I wish I had known when I was a kid. And you know, what really motivated me to go back and get these was seeing Johan Kim. I love what's going on with with you with Johan, Johan, excuse me. And you know, as excited as I am about Johan, you know, there's a little bit it makes me say, darn it, I wish when I was a kid I had to learn that. But I'm mostly just really, really happy that people are finally able to learn without being forced to read notes first. Uh, as I understand, that's kind of what's going on behind Johan. Johan has an amazing piano teacher that's kind of staying quiet in the background. And that's, I see Johan Kim playing what he's playing from the perspective of a piano teacher. And I'm very, very happy for what he's doing. And as honored as I'd be to be able to chat with Johan at some point, I'd be much more interested in talking to his teacher. So uh, I'm not teaching anything new here. I've just made a material to try to help everybody else as we're all in the process of learning this. And I made these years and years and years ago. And I think now is the time when people are interested and I can share this. Now, I want to explain one other thing, something that I did with, uh, where I'm trying to change uh, OBS. You're going to go here and explain this. I'm going to pull out my little uh, uh, nifty doodle litty. When I'm, when I'm, uh, let's be really simple and use boring C. I know if you have perfect pitch, it, it, it's going to drive you nuts just thinking about it, but just bear with me here. Okay. Why are you black? You're black because you actually, you know what it's doing? This is a, this is a GIF file. So there really is only one color. Cause it's such a small file. It doesn't recognize blue. So I'm going to take, I've got this triad. So I'm going to try, you know, you, you, there's your triad, right? We're practicing inversions, right? Okay, the second inversion, third inversion, and there's our inversion up on the top. Now, here's what I would do. As a teacher, I would tell people, to play, you play the C chord, play first the five and then the one. So it'd be bum, 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 okay, and then second inversion, bum, 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 well, running out of room, bum, bum, 
bum 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 and I would tell students for years to practice their inversions this way. Play play the triad one hand, two hands, whatever level you're at. You know, play the inversions normally. Bum 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 as you know first, but after you've kind of got the inversion, as soon as as soon as you've got the fingers kind of right, still not fast with it, play the inversion and then bum bum. Bum 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 And by doing this, you're training your ear to hear the intervals of a fourth during an inversion and a fifth at the root triad and to feel the difference and to hear to be able to pick apart the harmony that's going on, high, low, middle, and so forth. And you're training your ear to hear the sequence because five leads to one. And you're training your fingers to know where five and one and three are at these inversions. Now, by doing this, it's so simple. But by doing this, you're training yourself to recognize intervals by just listening to them, you've trained yourself to know which inversion is probably being played. Just intuitively, just, I could probably do this. And you're not even thinking about it. This isn't a book on ear training. Today we're going to talk about it. It's just, it's instinctively there. And you automatically know where the six is probably going to be. And you automatically know where the seven is probably going to be. And you can find the two easily because... You know, if this is one in five, then two is right nearby. This is the three, so I can go up, move my pinky up to hit four or whatever. You know, you've automatically known where the 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 the, the home bases, if you will, of of the notes are. So finding the other chords in the inversions or the other notes within other chord structures will be very, 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 very easy. So this was a, a basis. I I learned this. Shout at you guys with the Parchers. Uh, some of my piano students long, long ago, of course, they are beyond college. The, the oldest is buying his own house now. So proud of you guys. I, I learned that with these guys to try to get them to learn because as little kids, they're wilder than pig hair. Their, their parents would know. Their mother would laugh about that. But I, I remember trying to get these kids to understand the concept. And it's like that was the only way to make it work. So this came out of my own experience using using this coupled with the other sheets, you could probably come up with all kinds of exercises. I mean, I, I would think if you're going to practice a nine, you know, if you're going to practice all your nine chords, break them apart in an order. Like play, like play the nine and then play one five to just train your muscles where they are. 